kia koutou, nga mihi nui kia koutou katoa, nau mai haere mai ki te kune nga pūre huroa, ki te tautoko i tēnei kaupapa. Ko te tumanako, hei whakamiharo me whakanyakau. Ko ai etu nei, ki te tātoku māma, nō wonga nō ia hau, ko nga te hine kura te hapu, I re re kou mai te au e nui nei, mai te kāu i maunia ki tangaro, ko au te awa, ko te au ko au. Ki te tātoku pāpa, nō ngā pui a hau, ko ngā i tūti aru i te hapu. Nō taumara nui a hau, i ngāri kei te noho tamaki makaurau i nai nei, ko Johnson mo te hira a hau, nō reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora nō tātou katoa. Wow, we've had some really uh, impressive talks so far. Hopefully um, I can try and keep the level up. Um, so I've left me feeling quite conflicted, actually. Very excited, um, but also saddened in some ways. Um, and I think through uh, my presentation you'll, you'll see both sides of that. Um, but I thought I'd switch things up a little bit. Um, contrary to the name I had earlier, um, Actually, so what is a unique character of New Zealand's design DNA? I actually make notes. I don't normally make notes, um, but I think this is a really significant event. Um, I don't know the answer to what is New Zealand's unique design character DNA, but I do know what makes New Zealand unique. It's Māori culture. It's te reo Māori. It's the way that Māori engage with each other and do things. And in order to develop this unique character of New Zealand design, I think we need to consider the contribution of Māori culture, um, not just to our, our, our larger society, um, but to how we do things in the classroom, and in a tertiary design classroom. Um, I think as designers, we're in a privileged position within society that we get to imagine, or in this case, reimagine um, how Aotearoa looks and feels. Um, so again, I think we're at a pivotal point in that. Um, so in my presentation, what I'm going to talk about um, is a project called the Aotearoa House um, and this idea around decolonising um, tertiary design experiences and how we might try to start to develop and, and just articulate our own unique New Zealand way of teaching design um, that isn't so monocultural, that still reflects on the European heritage of design because you can't do design without that, you know, I really believe that but how we can teach and do design in a way that's authentically in a New Zealand way um, that's beyond us saying, okay, we've got unique landscapes. That's sort of what makes us different. You know, the disheartening part for me is hearing four speakers talk about design culture, 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 yet not seeing any culture. Mm -hmm. You know, it's strange for me to, to see Calvin's talk where he used the term pōhara, I think in a kind of token way, yet throughout the presentation, talked about there being an absence of culture in his design work and in our design identities. Um, when I heard David talk, again, you know, I really enjoyed both of your talks and um, you know, I kind of got the goosebumps just thinking about them still, but David Troopage is where he used a French metaphor for the land rather than whenua. You know, these things are painfully obvious to me, um, but for some reason they continue to be ignored. Um, so I want to talk about some of this. Um, it's hard to do so without being marginalised um, as a radical, particularly if you're Māori. Um, and also just within New Zealand's design community though, because our community is so small, you know, that if you stand up and say anything against the grain, um, you either get slapped down and get ignored. Um, so I'm going to say some things against the grain. <laughs> um, but, for, but for the most part, this, this talk is um, about moving forward actually, and that's why I change the topic of my discussion, rather than focusing on this monocultural history, I want to focus on this project we've been doing, which is about changing things in the classroom and showing you some of the results we've had, because um, I think it's more constructive and probably more positive. Um, so what is the Aotearoa House? Um, it really came from an idea that I'd scribbled on a whiteboard, which was, how might New Zealand look? Um, how, might, how, how might the places that we inhabit, particularly our homes, feel and um, connect with us as New Zealanders if they were designed from a bicultural perspective. And this was something really close to my heart, I guess, reflecting on growing up urban Māori and looking through photo albums of me and my brothers and sisters and our family and seeing the only Māori thing in those photos being us. <laughs> you know, I think globalisation has this effect 
on the environments we inhabit. And that has an effect, I think, on us personally, on who we think of ourselves culturally. So, so that was the, the core of this project. Um, uh, we ran it at Unitec for, uh, for the first time this semester, um, and it was a, there were a few firsts. It was the first interdisciplinary project they'd done at the institution. So we have five different um, visual arts disciplines. We have photography, um, visual arts, graphic design, product and spatial, all working together on this. Um, and again, at the core of it, it was trying to get these students to figure out how these things might not just look different, because people are often come to me and say, you know, Māori design, how do I use Māori design? How do I use pattern on things? And as you'll see from some of these students, it wasn't so much about teaching them about how to use Māori design, it was more about just teaching them how to be comfortable with Māori culture, how to be engaged with it. And once we did that, I didn't have to teach them anything. Actually, I found it a little bit redundant during some of the classes, because they were just doing things automatically really well. Um, so going into this project around, you know, how would New Zealand look? If things were designed, in my head anyway, it's with a Māori designer and a Pākehā designer got together and started to generate these things and create an Aotearoa of how I think it should look today. One of the challenges for the students was that there weren't many precedents for a lot of things they were trying to create. And that was really exciting and really challenging. For example, they might look at lighting in a house and think, well, Māori didn't have lights as such. But for them, what we did is we looked at the narrative. Okay, and there are a lot of Māori narratives around... Um, how Maori brought fire to the world, how we slowed the sun down. And the slowing the sun um, and extending daylight is the same thing as having light bulbs in the center. So we looked into a lot of these narratives and how these narratives um, might be helpful for us to generate new things. Um, the other approach was just looking at how Maori did some things. Um, for example, with one of these uh, projects, as you'll see, the student was considering how to design a table. And just um, from a quick look at history, you can see that Māori used to sit on the ground most often, so she created something that connected to that. So there were a few different avenues for these students to kind of create these projects. Um, um, this is probably my favourite one um, from the whole exhibition. We had about 35 students from this classroom. Only three of the students were Māori, by the way. Um, I think that's significant when you can consider the work that was produced. Um, <laughs> the, only problems, the only two problem students we had were uh, much older adult students um, and who are part here and I think not everyone's ready to, to get on board with this and that's fine um, we'll forget about those people and they'll become irrelevant eventually as we keep doing <laughs> <laughs> all of this work <coughs> but this light here um, that J Django created um, as you can see in some of the text it was inspired by the myth about Maui um, slowing the sun um, and manipulating the sun so um, the structure it's kind of hard to see on the, on the left side of it but there are actually weights on there, and it's intended that the light sits at a low level, and to activate it, you pull it, as Maui would have when, he's, when he um, used his, his ropes to slide on the sun. Um, and there are lots of different metaphors that the students fall into some of these projects. Um, this is the one that I just talked about earlier, um, Angra at Summer's um, Tane table and cutlery. So again, she looked at, you know, Maui didn't have tables, so how do we create something new? We just kind of look at what Maori were doing. Um, and also what Pākehā were doing, you know, we still have cutlery. Um, and I think the challenge for the students was that we weren't making Māori things, and we weren't making things for Māori. We were simply trying to create things through a bicultural design perspective and see what new things we could create. And I think there's a difference, you know, because Māori don't need things to be created for them. And if they do, we've got to ask them what they want anyway. And it's normally me who's doing it anyway, so... <laughs> um, but I think this table was a really cool little, um, another little project. I particularly like how she used the pātiki and took that motif, that kind of diamond motif that you see on the table, and put that in there as a real obvious signifier of, um, of kai and customary Māori culture, that pātiki, that kind of flounder pattern was often used on the tukutuku woven panels as an indication of having an abundance of food. Um, and I really like the little touches she did, you know, which written up here. She liked that it was close to the ground, to Papa Tuanuku, and then acknowledged the whenua of where our kai was coming from. Um, this is Jamie Cowie's um, biolocation of our tūpuna and he started with the idea of something around a coffee table. Um, so as it says here, the work intends to identify the presence of ancestral values in the context of modern living space. Um, but I like that, that bottom bit here, this is the text that they would written about the still group reflecting whakapapa, the family of a person, um, identifying topographical 
and environmental features from the cultural heritage and translating them into a design context. Um, he wanted to have um, all Māori plants in this as well, um, which I thought was quite interesting. And originally, um, because this wasn't finished, she had a sliding piece on the top as well, so that um, you could still place things on it and use it as a coffee table of sorts. Um, I can show you all of the examples. Um, but this here is a table inspired by Harakeke, created by one of the special students. Uh, and I think that the inspiration is quite obvious when you look at that image there. Um, this coat hanger here was inspired by the narrative of, how, of Rata and the birds. And in the story, Rata went into the forest to, uh, to cut down a tree for the waka. And every time he came back to get the tree the next day, it had been put back up. And he stayed there one night to try and figure out what happened. And he saw the birds and the insects and everything putting this tree back together. And the reason was that he, did, he hadn't acknowledged Tane Mahuta, you know, the Māori deity associated with forests. Um, and once he'd done that, he was able to use this to fashion it like um, But in this, um, which has gone through many iterations, the pieces that you see coming out are meant to represent the pieces of that tree um, that, were, that were pulled out during that process. Um, originally, she also designed another one, which is in here, but it was around how to use a, um, the metaphor of a hongi and a coat hanger. And she had these kind of magnetic hook things, and so your coat kind of made a hongi with the clothes, and we had all these really <laughs> interesting things coming out of it. Um, the top left-hand one is uh, cutlery sets, which are inspired by ideas around Matariki. Um, and these ceramic vases, they were also inspired by the Arata narrative. Um, so you can see that these actually reference tree trunks at different heights. Um, and this was a really cool student, and normally that, that colour scene, he, um, he was a foreign student, a couple of years up, um, from his trip to Rotorua, he took out all these beautiful um, images of the mud and all the thermal stuff, and he used those to kind of inspire some of the, um, the colour schemes that he was putting down there. Um, so, two minutes. So, embedding and activating tikanga in a tertiary design classroom. Um, I think this is how it's worked, and this was the big insight for me. Every time we had class, we hung at each other, all the students. We opened our class with karakia, we had shared kai, and we closed our class with karakia. This is a design class. We did this every single time. You know, one or two times is token, but as you go through it over and over again, the students take it on board themselves, and these guys did. They led the karakia. The first time I had the class, I actually hadn't prepared my closing karakia. One of the students said to me, we need a karakia to close it afterwards. So, like, sorry, you know, when you're doing things on the fly. Um, but you can see through some of these examples, normalising tikanga Māori and Māori processes in a design class was the key to having these students be really comfortable with working with what can be quite tricky material. Um, and the best thing about this, you don't see any kōru in any of this. You know, there's, there are no kōru. Um, just really quickly, um, I just want to leave you guys with two things. Um, the first is a whakatoki or proverb which says, uh, which goes, kia whakatomuri te haere ki moa. Um, loosely translated, it means um, we walk into the past, or we walk into the future, sorry, with our eyes fixed on the past. You know, looking at our tūpuna, whether they be Māori or Pākehā. And I always have that whakatoki in mind, and I'm always thinking, looking at our ancestors, you know, my Pākehā and my Māori ones, what might they think of the future? And what might they change? And how can I make a future that might connect to, to what I want? Um, and the second thing I just want to leave you with is a question. Um, because I, I believe this conference is really significant, um, particularly in terms of New Zealand's design history. But I think we're at a crossroads. And on one path, we can continue down exactly the same trajectory, ignoring the obvious, ignoring Māori culture and its input, you know, in larger New Zealand society, but also how it might affect our design. Or we can go down the other path where we embrace Māori culture wholeheartedly and let Māori things shape our lives and minds of not just ourselves, but our students too. Nor data tenakoto tenakoto kuro no tatoka.